Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's wait for our first viewers. Oh, we can just chat amongst ourselves. I oh. positioned myself here today so that you could see out the window. It's um, it's ridiculously cold and icy and snowy here. Oh my I goodness. mean, I know like you guys kind of get this weather all the time, but we don't. <laughs> this last week has just been hellacious. And so we had, we started with snow and then we turned into wind and we can get like, I think they clocked some of the wind as it comes out of the gorge at 85 to hundred miles an hour. Oh my you goodness. Get like these huge winds that come through the Columbia Gorge into Portland. And then it got colder and then it um, started freezing rain. <laughs> and so it was just like, eh. and it's still, I mean, it has rocketed up to 35, but it's like 33, 34, 35. It just barely is getting over freezing. So it's just, staying there kind of like you can see out the window but we feel so lucky we kept power we didn't mm -hmm. have any you know horrible pipe freezing but all over the city i mean if you've ever been in the pacific northwest you know we're surrounded by trees and having snow then winds then ice there are trees down everywhere so there are still tens of thousands of customers without power because the trees went down first and they pulled down the power lines and then the uh, roads got all icy. So then the people who fixed the power lines can't get to the power lines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it was just like, ah. so I feel like once it gets maybe just a couple of degrees warmer, I need to like walk around my neighborhood and just personally thank all of the trees for staying <laughs> upright during the storm because oh my gosh it's been so crazy wow but yep yeah, tired yeah. of it needs to stop i saw oh, a yeah. great meme that was and maybe we could even um replace you know eastern canada um your weather got out and it's all over my backyard and it's <laughs> drunk again so if you could come oh. get it i'd really appreciate it <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, well, sorry. We we had to send it somewhere, so I guess we sent it to you. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. So here we are, and we have some fun things for um, for to kick off the uh, 2024 sewing projects. Oh, yes. Okay, I guess we'll get started. Okay. Sure, why not? Hi, everyone. Tobias here from Janome, Canada. Uh, it is very cold outside, and it may be where you are as well. Sorry about that. We couldn't do anything for you. Uh, here, back again with Liz Johnson from Sew for Home, here to give you another really nice step-by-step -step little mini tip tutorial on how to make an adjustable strap. I'm going to go over a few other little details that might help you, uh, and I'm going to now turn it over to Liz. Hey! Yes, you're hearing me rambling on, so I'm sorry if I just sound like I'm whining, but are really tired of the weather but we're warm we're inside i have this great tip for you and although yes i want you all to pay attention for sure but do not worry about taking any kind of copious notes um this tip is outlined in um, a step-by-step -step form that you can find on genomi.ca um, I'll have Tobias kind of walk you through that when we're done here. You can find it there and you can also find it on their Janome Life blog. So I just think uh, even though we have that tip up and you can access it and all that kind of good stuff, sometimes I think it's just super helpful for you to see somebody do it, especially something like an adjustable strap. I've kind of always called it this magic rope trip trick because it feels like you're weaving and you're going over and under and it's like, wait a minute, how did we go from this just strip of webbing to an actual strap that moves? And it is way easier than you might think. Um, and it just takes you practicing through it a couple of times. And I think it will easily cement in your brain. There are a number of different options, but the basics are the same strap to strap to strap. 
the main thing that you need is an adjustable buckle. And there's a couple different kinds. Um, I'm gonna be using this kind, which has a fixed center bar. The bar doesn't move. But the other type that's real common is one with a movable bar, adjustable slide buckle. It's got that bar that can kind of slide up and down. And really, personal preference, which one you might like to use best. I will say that if your strap webbing, whatever you're using is particularly thick, you're probably better off with this movable center bar. It just gives you a little bit more flexibility as you're weaving because the bar can kind of move up and down as you're weaving that um, webbing through it. But I'm gonna use this one. And everything I'm doing is just one inch. Um, you can go a little bit smaller um, and you can go a little bit bigger. But um, I think in terms of readily available hardware, I don't know. And maybe Tobias, you've seen something. Mm -hmm. You can, of course, go down to little tiny lingerie stuff. Um, and I, I think the largest I've seen is maybe two and a half inch. Mm -hmm. But all your hardware has to match. And so I think probably that one, one and a half inch, two inch is probably the most standard. Yeah, one is definitely the most common, then one and a half and three quarters, but definitely one is the easiest to find everything for. Yeah, and everything matching, which sometimes exactly. that can be a challenge. <laughs> so I'm going to go with this guy. Oh. And um, the other thing, and Tobias is going to talk a little bit about this as well. If you're just starting out, if you haven't done this before, I really encourage you to practice with some sort of webbing, ribbon, whatever, strapping, belting, that you can tell what is the front and what is the back. And this is just something I threw together in about two seconds. It's just a strip of cotton webbing. It's probably about two feet here. And I just zigzagged a ribbon down one side. So I didn't really worry about anything. I'm not gonna use this for anything, but it does allow me to easily see what is the front of the webbing and what is the back of the webbing. So once you have your strip, both the ends are gonna be raw. Find your adjustable buckle. These, even these fixed ones, I would say the majority of the time, there's still just a tiny bit of a curve to it, almost like you would find in a belt buckle, just a little bit of a curve. So this is the front of the adjustable slide. So I'm going to take my webbing and I'm going to feed it up and over. So I'm going up and then down the other direction over that center bar. So there you go. And right side out. So I've gone up and over with the right side of the webbing out. I'm going to pull it back on itself probably about an inch. I mean, it doesn't have to go super far back. In fact, if you can keep it a little tight, it will look a little neater. Um, but basically you need to just be able to get it under your presser foot and run your stitching to secure it. So that's my next little step out here. Basically you can see I've just stitched it in place. And, you know, I would go back and forth a couple times just to make sure it can stand up to yanking because any kind of handle or strap or whatever you need to be able to yank on it. So go back and forth. For the most part, it's gonna be covered up. It's gonna be inside. So, you know, you don't have to completely panic about what it looks like, but you know, as with everything, keep it as neat and tidy as you can. One thing to keep in mind, one of the options that there are is how to finish those raw ends. So you cut your length. Um, you can see that for my sample, I didn't really bother to do anything. And so it's already fraying up a little bit because this is just cotton webbing and a little grow grain ribbon. If this had been a real project, I definitely would have done something to finish that on both ends for something like this with cotton, maybe a little bit of seam sealant, let that dry, and then a really tight zigzag. That would be a great way to finish it keep it nice and flat. 
You could certainly do a teeny tiny hem, but for the most part, adding any bulk is not my first choice. But if you have something really thin, um, again, our lingerie strap, our bra strap, perhaps you're just working with ribbon, something very fine, like a really delicate purse, um, you could do a teeny tiny hem. So you're gonna pull it through, you'd make that little teeny tiny hem, and then you'd stitch through right there to secure everything. So now that you have that in place, you're gonna find the other important piece of hardware, which is most likely to be some sort of a D-ring, rectangle ring, oval ring. It can be any of the above. And here is another option point. For this example, I'm just using a D-ring. I'm gonna show you how to attach those that will then eventually clip to swivel clips that are already attached in my fantasy tote that I'm making this <laughs> little itty bitty adjustable strap for. But like I said in the beginning, there's lots and lots of different ways, but you'll have some way that you're going to put that opposite free end through your ring. So again, here's my back. I'm gonna slip that through. And right now, my wrong sides are facing one another. Just let the D ring kind of slide to the bottom out of the way. And then I'm gonna go back up and over, just like I did at the beginning, but I'm going over that loop that's already there. So that right there, that is the key. That's what allows this thing to be adjustable either direction. So up, back over, going right over that secured part that you did originally. And that wrong side that you just pulled through, that means that is now against the right side of your webbing. So you can pull it all the way through and all the way back. So now you have one other free end. And we're gonna attach that to a matching D-ring. And it goes through just the way we went through that other bar. So I'm gonna put it against the flat edge of the D-ring. And just like the center bar, I'm gonna pull it back on itself just a little bit, maybe an inch or so. This stitching, you do wanna be a little more precise. This is gonna be easier to see once it's on your project. But again, stitch through two times, even three times, keeping your stitch nice and even and one right on top of the other, and that's gonna secure it. So now you have a matching D-ring on either end. You can clip on your swivel clip, to either end. And then as I mentioned, this in my fantasy tote is already attached. It's already got a tab and it's in either side of a tote. So now I can take that adjustable strap on and off. But again, who knows? Could be something even different. This could be a rectangle ring. It could already be secured into a tote project. A lot of different options that once you practice it through a couple times, really start to get cemented in your head. And it's like, oh yeah, I could use this on just about anything. So just remember, start with those two raw ends, secure one around the center bar, take the other one through your ring or whatever else you're using to attach it, and then come back up and over to make that adjustable slide. Mm -hmm. That end, now you're an adjustable strap expert. <laughs> but Tobias, you said you had some cool tips too. Yeah, well, one thing done. I wanna say first is I love this adjustable strap uh, because it's completely removable, like you said, and that makes the construction, let's say you're making a bag, it makes it so much easier because you're not dealing with the bulk and all the the messiness of this while you're putting in the lining, flipping it all inside out. Because if you have right. a whole thing, then you kind of have to, you know, crumple it up and make sure it's not in the way of your sewing. So you, you do everything you need to do. You flip the bag right side out, you finish it, and then you just whoop, swivel hooks, clip the strap on, 
done and it's so much easier. Uh, so yeah, the one thing that I wanted to show is there's a few different ways of uh, decorating your strap with fabric. And um, I'm not going to take credit for this because uh, Amanda, our fellow educator, is <laughs> the one who taught me this. Um, this really easy, foolproof way of um, decorating it with fabric. So I'm using a one inch strap here. I'm going to use that as my uh, base measurement. So what I've done is I cut a two inch wide strip of this fabric, two inches wide, folded it in half gave it a press, and then I stitched along the raw edge at a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna try to stitch yep. along at a quarter of an inch. So now we've got a folded two inch strip with a stitch a quarter inch. Then I folded it, folded the stitching over to one side and gave that a press. And that left me with the perfect covering for a strap and all I did was I just put it in the center clipped it in place and top stitched it down on both sides so it's just a really really easy and fool foolproof to get good results this method fold quarter inch stitch fold the quarter inch over press put it in the middle and top stitch and what I like to use for edge stitching or top stitching, as I'm sure a lot of you know, is the bi-level foot. Because it has two different sort of levels on each toe. And that lets the fabric accent sort of ride along the edge of the foot. And it makes it really easy to top stitch that consistently. And so that's, awesome. my, that's my one little tip about covering the strap with a bit of fabric. I love that. You know, we've used that technique, not that exact way, but a lot of times on bags where, you know, you're already working with maybe two or three different fabrics. And that is such an excellent way to tie the strap mm. into what the bag looks like. Because, I mean, we run into that all the time. The amount of variety the colors whatever that's available in webbing especially as you start to you know vary away maybe from that one inch yeah. norm pretty limited pretty yeah. limited yeah. so by adding that fabric strip to the top um not only does it make it easier to do it looks great with whatever bag or tote or bin <laughs> that mm -hmm. you're making and Tobias you do way more um garment sewing than we do I mean besides my little bra strap analogy is there anything I mean what else I guess you could kind of maybe do like overall straps although you're usually using an overall buckle for yes. that but me I don't know maybe you could I I think it's mostly in the the bag world and the sort of like utility sewing kind of thing Mm -hmm. or a lot of the time, um, those those little sliders, the the sort of middle slider that you uh, showed us, gets used uh, in those kind of like military like cargo pants where they have an adjustment for the waist. Oh, sure, yeah. for the waist, yeah. So then you know you can have a pair of pants that it can fit a waist anywhere from thirty two to thirty eight. Um, uh -huh. Just, just kind of fold it right in. <laughs> um, but I just I, I just wanted to make a quick note about uh, quality of webbing. There's a few different uh, sort of materials that you can get. I, I have come to enjoy cotton webbing the most. Mm -hmm. And but the the sort of the sort of less expensive option is what they call polypropylene. And that's mm -hmm. sort of like your plasticky synthetic key. And I just wanted to show here's polypropylene. And this is what happened when I just tried to cut it with some scissors. I got all this all this fuzz. Yeah, um, and it's just like oh, it's just a little less pleasant. And uh, if I were to try to iron this and uh, or press it, sorry, to one side, it would probably melt. Uh, and that's that's why I love uh, cotton webbing. It's just such a. It just feels better. It has that nice texture to it, and uh, it feels more durable. So I would always recommend uh, cotton webbing or. If you have something that really needs to stand up to some weight, uh, you can get some nylon webbing. 
There is one that we've used a number of times also because it tends to come in um, wider widths and mm. it's called like seatbelt webbing. Oh, so yeah. it's the same kind of consistency of the seatbelt in your car. So it's much more flexible. Um, we've used that in two and even two and a half inches. Mm. And I, to me, the only benefit of it is that yet you can melt it, you mm. know, so to seal it, you can just, you know, run it through the flame and you can melt it and you still don't have to add that bulk of a ham or anything like that. Mm. Of course, you can't really do that if you've done the fabric thing over the top, you'd have to be mm. a little more, more careful. So in that case, maybe the, you know, that tight zigzag finish or something like that might be a better option. But I think I'd be on your team. I think for the most part, the cotton it just feels like you said, just feels better. <laughs> but, oh, yes. And yeah, it's cool. much softer and easier to work with. Definitely, definitely feeds through the machine better. It doesn't have that kind of slippery feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the idea of that using that bi-level foot. That's a great idea. Yes. And I, even if you're going to, um, if part of your strapping um, design, if you're putting that on the front of a tote or something like that, mm. um, maybe the bottom of it comes up across the front of the tote, using the bi-level to stitch that down onto the, pa the panel of the bag is another great option for that. It's just such a great foot. Yes. And I mean, it's one of those like, oh, that is such an easy idea. You know, I can't. Yeah. Why didn't I think of that? You know, <laughs> that's that. Why didn't sure. I think of that? <laughs> I, I have I have just the thing. So yeah, like it, uh, this is. Well, I'm going to turn the exposure down on the on the camera there. There we go. Oh, there we uh, go. So oh, cute! Yeah, the, the strap sure. has been stitched directly onto the bag. Yeah, so it, it's the decorated strap that I just showed, and then there, <laughs> and then yeah, we use the the bi level foot. Just like that, if you can imagine this on the machine to sort of guide, because it'll it'll keep that strap right in the same place and give you a really nice edge stitching result. And if because it's using the same thread as or the same color thread as the strap, so mm -hmm. you can't even see the stitching that's on the edge of the strap there. That's so great. Really, really nice. Yeah, a lot of different awesome presser foot. A lot of different. Uh, options for the presser foot it's one of those ones that it's a very simple foot but it works for so many different things which yeah. is why i love it it's super cool um i wanted to ask because i saw your like i said i saw your very very cute social media video you have an excellent workshop coming up for those of you in the um oakville area i want to tell people about your surgery class absolutely I'm very excited. So on January 27th, we are having a Serger Basics class. And so that it's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, <laughs> you bring your Serger and we're going to set up and we're basically going to walk through, first of all, how a Serger works. Uh, I have a really cool animation. You've probably seen it for a regular sewing machine of how how the hook can grab oh, the thread man. and grab the <laughs> So we, uh, I have one for a serger, and we're gonna look at it. We're gonna talk about when to use a serger, when not to use it, and then we're actually gonna get hands on. Gonna go through how to thread the serger, how to adjust tensions for different fabrics, uh, differential feed. That's that's one that uh, people definitely brush up on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know when, mm. when do I go up? When do I go down? Mm. Um, and uh, we're yeah basically going through basic use of your serger uh and at the end we're going to have a q a session so it's it's really for uh people who are new to, new to sergers or if you haven't used yours in a few years maybe and you want to brush up on the basics uh that is for you so if you want to sign up you can go to i'm going to type it in the comments shop.genomi.ca and uh, there's a lot of other cool stuff on that website. So just browse and uh, maybe sign up. And uh, that sounds great. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to be the first of a few a few things we have going on in the winter. We're going to have a really cool. Uh, well, I don't want to spoil anything, but we're going to have a cool uh, 
sort of like bag making, make and take class towards the end of February. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for more information about that. But as of right now, we are, we're staying simple and we're doing the surgery basics. That's excellent. That is so cool. Um, maybe just real quick, because I had promised people, and you can show them the shop.ca, maybe share oh. your, your screen and let's show them kind of how to get to that as well as how to find um, the adjustable straps tutorial Absolutely. if they want to go check that out. And because I know it's both on the main site as well as on the Genomi Life blog. Yes. I told people they didn't have to take notes. <laughs> now they have to they have to remember how to do everything. Okay. Sharing the screen. Here we go. Okay. Okay. You can see it? Yep, sure can. Okay. So we're on genomi.ca here. And now we're going to get to the adjustable strap instructions. So we go to inspire. Then we go to sew for home. And it's under uh, mini tips. So there's a whole bunch of mini tips. And we're going to click to see all the mini tips. And it's right up there at the top here. How to make an adjustable strap with sew for home. And so you can, we have it in English and in French. So we're going to click the English one. And that just brings you over to the blog where it is written out in full. And uh, it's it's also linked to the Facebook post that I made about this live. It's linked in there as well, if that's quicker for you to get to. But uh, that's how you get to it from genomi.ca. And that brings you through all of what we did just for a refresher. Gives you some good tips about covering your strap with fabric and all that. So that's there for you. And yeah, like like we said... You go to shop.genomi.ca. We have, ooh, let's see. We actually have a few things on there. We've got the chair. We've got the scissor Super kit. Super good deals. Got Super the sew, good the, deals. The sewing kit especially. That's the one that I would bring most attention to. Really great oh, deal. Wow. That's so cool. For 30, 30 bobbins, the bobbin saver, five packs of needles, uh, eight spools of really nice quilting cotton. And you get these two storage cases that uh, that you can put all that stuff in. Oh, that's really, super really great. Nice deal. We sold a lot of them, and we, we have a few left. So if you're kind of in the market for one, the time would be now because there's limited stock. So just thought I would let you know. Yeah, uh, that's a great idea. So what have you got here? You've got classes and events. Classes and okay. events. There we go. So, yeah, here we have the Serger Basics. Uh, pretty much... The information I laid out for you just just now, it's all it's all there, all the details and our address and the time. So if you are interested in that, shop.genomi.ca, that's where you go to sign up. Yeah. Now, what if I don't have a surgery yet? Will there be surgers there that that folks could use in case you know if they're thinking about wanting to get a surger? That is I'm a sure good. there'd be something there they could use. That is a good question. Yes, we do have a few surgers here. We have uh, the Magnolia, which is the most entry level. Then we have mm -hmm. a FA4 surger. And then I think from from uh, home, I'm going to bring the AirThread 2000D surger just mm. to show everyone how fun it is. So <laughs> uh, I would say, yeah, we'll have up to uh, two or three surgers. I would just ask that uh, you would email us uh, beforehand and let us know that uh, you would like us to provide a serger for you. But uh, other than that, yeah, you can bring your serger. We ask uh, that you only bring a Janome or Elna brand serger just because uh, we're <laughs> it's it's not within our jurisdiction to uh, provide support for other brands. So Janome or Elna. Fair enough. Fair enough. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a grand old time. We had uh, We had a holiday card making session in December. And we had so much fun trying out all the features on the new machines, uh, the CM17, the M8, and the 9480. I had, a couple, great. I had a couple of other machines out, like the S9 and the 6650, but no one was interested in those. They just wanted to play <laughs> on the new machines, and I don't blame of them. Of course. 
Of course, of course they do. Oh my goodness. Well, I am actually somewhat amazed that we got through all of that information in a half an hour. That um, is was pretty magical. Um, but always lots more stuff to go over and we'll be back again next month. Um, we try to do every third Thursday. So that is kind of what you should look for, but we'll always throw out some um, information on social media. So when you know when to tune in, but also you guys always do such a nice job of posting it. So it's real easy. You know, if you weren't able to jump on with us live, you can um, find it on YouTube and on Facebook. And I think just those two, Facebook and YouTube. Maybe, yes, yeah. no. Uh, okay. it's, it's stored on our Genomi HQ, Genomi Canada YouTube channel under the live tab. That's where you find it. Cool. Okay, there we go. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, Tobias. This was great. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for joining us. Stay warm. Send us really good thoughts for melting ice. <laughs> <laughs> and we will be back again soon. All right. All right. See you guys. Bye, everyone. Bye.